Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be talking about why I think Clover has a pretty good chance of being a mega, mega stock that can have a big run similar to that of not only AMC, but also GameStop. I know that's a bold claim. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. I can be completely wrong, but I've, I've been trading Clover for a while. I actually have it pulled up right now. Back in January, um, I put out a swing trade idea for Clover. It, it was perfect. You know, the entry was 1320. Um, that was where I put out the entry. And you could see if I just hit that play button, it actually hit my entry and hit the target. Then some other stuff with Hindenburg came out and it kind of fell lower. Another example of, you know, how I've been trading Clover in the past is actually on the day of all time lows, I put out another trade idea for Clover. Um, it was a bullish crab harmonic pattern, just like a technical pattern. Um, just to summarize it really quickly, it's never been that low since the day I put out that trade. So that was pretty much like I put out an idea on the exact day for all time lows on Clover. Um, it, it's it's a stock I've been trading for a while and right now it just feels like a storm is brewing. So I really want to just quickly go over everything that is off the top of my head on this stock and just everything I'm thinking about it. So let's get started. There's a lot to talk about here. Um, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I'm just trying to talk about everything I possibly can when it comes to this stock. If you've been watching my live streams, you already know I talk about it a lot. But I want to make a dedicated video to just like a breakdown of Clover Health. So we're going to start off with earnings. Earnings for Clover happened last week. Um, and right after earnings, we had a very, very nice move. Um, it went from about $8 to over $10 um, the day after earnings came out. They came out after hours. Um, and the biggest thing I think that came out of earnings was not only the revenue, not only the growth, but also the fact that they're they're just a company that's working on improving their, their guidance was good. I mean, if we look at the revenue alone, you had 400, over $400 million in revenue for the second quarter of 2021 compared to a year ago in the same quarter, you only had $172 million. So earnings went pretty well. We had a nice reaction on the price. Unfortunately, on Friday, the price did dip back down towards eight, but we're going to go over the chart in a little bit. There's just so much here. So earnings went well for Clover. You can look at the own report by yourself. I'm um, just going on Google and look it up. But even if we move over here, a Seeking Alpha article just came out about Clover. And again, this is kind of like a blogger website. It's not really like an actual institution. But if I go over to the top, um, they did say we are upgrading our rating from neutral to outperform. So I just think there's a lot of people, you know, looking at Clover right now. It might be a little bit crowded, but that's not always the worst thing sometimes it's not good because of supply and demand if things are really crowded because then everybody's going to be in so where will the demand come from but right now i still think at the current price of eight dollars clover is really looking interesting obviously we just talked about that revenue grew from 140 percent in the second quarter um or it did grow that much percent and just a really good article here another part about clover and why you know squeezes in the title and the thumbnail of the video is you do have a pretty high short interest. It's above 20%, which is a squeezable short interest, right? And we have seen in the past, Clover can already squeeze. We've already seen that in June of this year. Um, and there's just, there's been a lot going on with this name. You know, in January, kind of was a SPAC. It was called IPOC. It merged over to Clover Health. And right after that, I feel like Hindenburg Research, a notorious uh, firm for shorting stocks and just putting out articles, did, did have some words to say about Clover in a DOJ investigation, which fair point there. Also, not a lot of fair points in the article, but you can look into it. Like, again, I'm just trying to make this a quick video, just trying to bring up everything and just kind of summarize everything. But, you know, you had a good earnings and we, we kind of have already seen retail interest go into the stock. So from an institutional standpoint, it's not really clear, right? If we kind of, you know, look deeper into things, you look at the dark pool data, it's pretty, pretty wild. But also, if you look at the fails to deliver on Fintel, you can see that you had an immense amount of failures to deliver um, back in the end of July, I believe, looking at this chart. And what does that really mean? It means basically when people are shorting stocks, they need to borrow those shares. Now, there's a certain amount of time you have to return those shares um, before they're known as fails to deliver. And we had a unbelievable bill amount. I don't even know if I said that right. An unbelievable amount of fails to deliver back in July. Uh, and, and that's just also really interesting because it could mean that potentially there are still a lot of shares on loan right now that have to be delivered. And how do they get delivered? From what I understand is they have to be bought back, right? When you're shorting a stock, you bar the shares you sell against, and then to cover your position, you have to buy it back. So we have not only a record amount of fails to deliver, not only a 23% short interest, which is squeezable, but also if we look over here 
and we go over to the options chain, you have a crazy amount of contracts, um, especially just for this week alone, August 20th. You have a lot of calls, not only for the $10 strike, but also the $9 strike. And even if we're gonna go more out of the money, we have the $15 strikes over here. I mean, you can look at a bunch of other stocks. Having an open interest um, of over 100,000 contracts for calls compared to only 28,000 for puts is pretty insane. So, you know, if you look at the fails to deliver and the short interest, it's squeezable from just a share standpoint. But if you also look at the options chain, there is a potential for a gamma squeeze. Now, what do I mean by that, right? When you have an immense amount of call options for a certain strike that are overweighing put options, what has to happen is market makers they need to hedge those, right? So if those calls become in the money, if Clover gets to $10 before August 20th, which is this Friday, what's gonna happen is market makers wanna stay neutral, right? They wanna stay neutral, but if they have to hedge their positions, technically they might need to buy back shares. Now, if we get over 10 and market makers need to buy back their shares, obviously that can raise the price. And what happens when the price raises, you can get to the next strike price. And once you do that, you can kind of create a cyclical effect of a gamma squeeze where every single time you get up to a new strike price, market makers have to buy shares to be more um, hedged into their positions. But while they're doing that, in turn, it raises the price and it kind of just creates a cyclical effect, like I said. So it's just kind of a storm brewing if you look at everything from the earnings to the to the options chain to the short interest, not only to the fundamentals, which I'm not going to be really going into, but you know, it's a Medicare company that's also working on AI technology, um, which is the Clover Health Assistant, which could also be huge. Um, there's just so so much, and you know, if you've been following my channel, the only time I really talk about a stock like this is when I was talking about Fisker. And if you've been around for a while, you know that when I was talking about Fisker, it was at $9 and eventually ran up to over $30. So, um, you know, there's no way I know for sure that this is going to be a huge stock and it's going to go, it's going to run like crazy. But just looking at all the data I personally see, there's just so many different things lining up. Even if you look at the Wall Street bets chatter, and again, this is just really just retail sentiment, what we have seen previously, previously this year, AMC and GameStop running. They were at the top of the Wall Street Bets chatter. And right now, what's at the top of Wall Street Bets chatter? Clover Health. If you look at the daily top chatter, it's Clover. If we look at the weekly top chatter, it's Clover. So it, it just comes to a point where like on every single data source you look at or every single website you look at or whatever you want to use for your trading, it's just I'm seeing all the signs of a potential big move for Clover. And even if we go over to the chart, which I'm going to do here in a second, you can see that things are pretty quiet on the chart. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening under the radar, but if you look at the chart, you can't really see that. Um, so we're gonna head over to the chart and just talk about everything I'm seeing there. Again, I'm trying to keep this video as quickly or as quick as possible, but let's go over to the chart. Let me switch over to my other overlay. All right, let me go full screen. So let's look at this chart. You know, I'm a, I'm a big technical guy for sure. And if we look at this, not only do you have the short interest, the gamma potential for a squeeze, but if you look at the chart, there's a lot of bullish technicals on the chart itself. Okay. So first off, we are down at this around $8 range. Now you did go a little bit below that back in March and April and May of this year, you went down to about $7 or $6.50 and you ran back up, but we're pretty close to that price. Um, you know, if we go more into it, you have a falling wedge that already broke out of it, already saw a nice push off of it. Um, but you also have hidden bullish divergence on the daily. We go over to the four hour, you have a bullish crab harmonic pattern. And if you're not fluent with technicals, you might be thinking, all right, this is just BS. What am I even saying right now? This is important. This bullish crab is important. Okay. Cause if we go over to the daily and we look back in time, that was the same exact harmonic pattern that led to the bounce off of all time lows. And if, if you watch the beginning of the video, which I'm sure you did, actually put out a trade with the same exact pattern, which was the all-time lows. So you have the same pattern that you saw at the all-time lows on the four-hour chart. And if we go over to the four-hour chart, you can see not only do we have that pattern, but at the pattern completion zone of this harmonic, you have an Adam and Eve double bottom, which is basically at first, on your first bottom, you have a V-shaped recovery, but then on your second bottom, you have more of a rounding bottom, which is what you're currently seeing. Um, so it's just, all over the place from the technicals to the fundamentals um, to the short interest to the options chain there's just so much going on even if you look at social media wall street bets the own clover reddit um twitter whatever whatever social media you use for stocks it's kind of like trending on all of them so it's just really interesting to me it's just something i wanted to share and just summarize everything that i've been talking about on stream in one quick video for newer uh you know newer people to see that aren't familiar with my channel these are all the things i'm looking at on clover 
uh, full disclosure, I do have a position in Clover right now, but that's just kind of me putting my money where my mouth is, right? So, you know, looking at the levels on Clover, I think $7.67 is your biggest support. It was your support back in June. It was your support in April. It was your resistance in, in the beginning of April. So 767 is the level of support I'm watching. Of course, you do have the $8 support and the 785 support, which was your bottom in July and August. Um, but if we go over to the daily, you can see we've had four days in a row where you had a good open, but then you kind of sell off throughout the day. So what you would probably be looking for is a kind of a little bit of divergence from that, where you have either a bad open and then you go to green or you just have you know a move from green to staying green. So from a technical standpoint, from all the other standpoints I brought up, it's really interesting. This is how I'm looking at it as a swing trade idea, you know, an entry around this low $8 area, a stop loss under that 767 support. And then my targets are 1050 ish, which is the 200 day moving average. After that, I have a target at 1225, which is a gap fill from July 1st. And then finally, I have a, another target at around 1320 ish, which is a historical level. It was if you go over to the daily, which we are on was your resistance and support at the end of June. It was your support in January and it was your resistance in October. But regardless of a swing trade standpoint, there still is a potential for a long-term investment here. Of course, if we look at this chart, it's not too different than both AMC and GameStop in February, right? So if we go on AMC's chart right now, and you can see here it made that move from $2 to 20 plus at the end of January. And then it came pretty, pretty hard down. Right, it came all the way down to about five dollars after hitting twenty, and that's when the real craziness happened. Right, you made a crazy move in January, you came pretty much most of the way back down, and then you went all the way up to seventy. If we go to GameStop, the same type of thing happened. Right, you made a crazy move at the end of January, from the low twenties all the way up until four hundred, almost five hundred, and then you came all the way back down to thirty-five. So even if we look at the Clover chart, we had a similar move. Right, they had a crazy move in the beginning of June where it went from. The mid six dollar area to 28 and now it's come all the way back down so it's just like i'm looking at a bunch of different things but all the different websites and data sources that i'm looking at are kind of lining up here and I, I don't know if i sound crazy i might be talking a little bit fast right now i'm just trying to get this video done quickly so it could just be very easy for for all of you to kind of watch it but there's just a lot there, there's a lot working here with clover and of course all this can fail it can just continue this downtrend and just go down to seven, six, five. I hope it doesn't. There's always a possibility for everything. So I'm not trying to act like any of this is a certainty. It's just something I really think is interesting that has a decent probability or more than a decent probability of making a crazy move in the short term, but also the long term as well. Um, so I just wanted to kind of summarize everything. Hopefully this video didn't make me sound crazy. Hopefully some of this made sense. I'm just trying to spew everything together and just get across the big points before kind of diving deep in everything. If you want more of like a deeper dive, just watch my live streams every single night at 9 p.m. EST, and that's where you can see most of my coverage. But I just wanted to make a video really quickly. It's still around $8. Personally, I think that's a good price, a very good price for the long term, but I can be wrong. So we'll see how, how this all plays out in the long run. Um, yeah, just make sure to manage your risk. Nothing I sell is financial advice, and hopefully this video gave you some sort of education. And yeah. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you on my streams at 9 p.m. EST every single night and peace out.